This video is going to teach you about percentages. If you want to skip forward to parts 2, 3 or 4, you can click on the icons on the screen now. Okay, the first thing you need to know about percentages is a method that's going to be suitable for all types of questions. So the way I teach is um, a percentage box method. Please pause the video now and just have a, take a moment to read through the information on the screen and understand what the box represents um, and then press play. Okay, so you should now understand that the right hand side is percentages, the left hand side is the amounts and we always have 100% in the top right corner. The way we use this box is by drawing arrows on. After we've filled in all the information we know, and there'll always be three boxes filled and only one empty, we then draw arrows either from the top to the bottom of the box or from the bottom to the top of the box. And that depends on where the blank box is. So if you're trying to find out a new, a new value, your arrows will point downwards. And if you're trying to find the original amount, your arrows will face upwards. Either way, you always divide by the bottom number and you always times by the top number. So again, if we look back this, this side, we divide by the top number and we do, sorry, divide by the first number and times by the second number. Okay? So let's have a look at a question. Well, finding 15% of £130, really, really common type of exam or test type of question. Here's the box, it's already filled out. We've got 100% in the top right hand corner, we just need to fill in the rest of the information. So we know that we're looking for 15%, so that just gets written in there. We know that the original amount was £130, that gets written in there. And then we say, okay, well we need to divide by 100 and then times by 15. So get your calculator. So let's clear the screen. We're going to take our £130 divide it by 100 and then times it by 15. Okay, if a fraction comes up, we just press the SD button to get it to a decimal form and we've got 19.5. That's going to be 19 pounds and 50 pence. Done. Okay, this question is very, very similar except it's in a worded format. So it's an uh, assessment objective two type question. Um, Daryl has been saving up for a computer. The computer's price has increased by 20%. It used to cost £275. Um, what is the new price? Well, again, let's get our box set up. Again, 100% always in the top right corner. That's done for us. We just need to put in the new information. So, original, £275. It's gone up by 20%. So we've gone up to 120. We know that we divide by the first value, which is 100, and we times by the second value, which is 120. So click the screen. 275 is your original amount. Divide by 100 times by 120. The new price of the computer is 330 pounds. Again, that's your question finished. Okay, part two then. We're looking at percentage increase and decrease. So, again, we're going to set up our box. 100% in the top right corner. We're looking at percentage increase. So, how much does something, how much does the price of something increase or decrease after a certain change? So, in this question, the price of cereal has gone up by 34%. So, highlight it. Uh, packet used to cost 234. So, the original amount. £2.34. It's gone up by 34%. So let's have a look at how much it costs now. As you can see, these questions are really, really similar to the ones um, before me finding percentage of an amount. They're just worded a bit differently. So we've got £2.34. I'm going to put that in the calculator to begin with so we know where we are. Then I'm going to go back and look at my values. So I need to divide by 100 to find what 1% is and then times by 134. Divide by 100 times by 134. So the new price is £3 and it's got to be 4 pence because remember we're working with money so we need to round to two decimal places. So £3 and 4 pence. 
Now, often in these percentage increase and decrease questions, rather than saying how much it costs now, they'll say what is the increase in the amount. So if they do say that, you just need to find the difference between these two values. Okay, so they said how much has the value of the cornflakes gone up by? We take our, oops, take our three pound four pence. We're going to take away our two pound thirty four that it used to cost, and so the increase is seventy pence. Okay, let's write that there. Seventy pence increase. Okay, so look at another question then. So. In a Christmas sale, sorry, in the Christmas sales, all of the cardigans are reduced by 45%. How much will a cardigan cost now if it used to cost 30%? Sorry, 30 pounds even. So, percentage, well, let's go for the original amount first. The original amount, 30 pounds. They've been reduced by 45%. Now, if they've been reduced by 45%, that means we're looking for 55%. Okay? 100% is the original amount. We're going down to 55% because 45% has been reduced. Okay? Again, we've filled it out now, so all we need to do is get our calculator up, plug in our original amount, divide by 100 times by 55. Oops. Times divide by 100 times 55. Okay, it's so a new price. Great, £16.50. In your exam, just as a point to remember, don't write 16.5 if they give you a question that's in money. You must write 16 pounds 50 pence. So you must put your extra zero on here to show that you know that it's 50 pence. Okay. So that's that question done. Let's move on to reverse percentages. Okay, so this is finding the original amount. So I'm going to bring down this box just to remind you before we read the question that the arrows are going up. So we divide by whatever's at the bottom and we're going to times by whatever value's at the top. Okay, so Miss Whitehead has used up 58% of the petrol in her car's tank. There is now 8 litres of petrol left. What is the maximum amount of petrol that her car can hold? Round your answer to two decimal places. Okay, again let's highlight the key information. Like I said, you're always going to be able to fill in three of the um, boxes out of the four. 100% um, always being one of them. We know we've got 58% here. This percentage always goes on the right hand side. And 8 litres here. Okay, so 58% of the car tank is filled up with 8 litres. So we're trying to work out, okay, well, if 58% is worth 8 litres, then what would 100% be worth? What is the, the, the maximum amount of petrol that we can get into the tank? So this time we're dividing by the bottom amount, so divide by 58%, and then times by 100. So we're looking at 8 litres, we're dividing by 58% to work out what 1% is, and we're going to times by 100 to work out what 100% is. Okay, again, fraction, you just click this button here. So the question says two decimal places, so I find my place. That's the second decimal place. Look next door. It's less than uh, 5, so I don't need to round up. So it's 13.79 litres. Okay, so, and that's your answer. Have a look at another one. So this time, the number of pupils that attend Lambeth Academy has increased by 19%. So 19 is key, key information. There are now 976 pupils. How many pupils were there when the school opened? So, again, we're looking at the original, so we're going to set up our original box. Exactly the same as before, except the arrows are going the other way. And we're going to fill in the information. So, it's increased by 19%. Okay, so we're now looking at 119%, because so it's increased. And there are now 970 six pupils. So after the increase, there were 976 pupils, we want to go back to work out, okay, well, what, what was the original amount? How many were there when the school first opened? Again, we just follow the arrows. Divide by 119 and times by 100. So 976, the original amount. You divide by, it's going to be 119, 
and then we're going to times by 100. Okay, so that is 820.1680672. Now, it doesn't tell you what to, what to round to, but we're looking at how many pupils they were when it first opened. So common sense tells me, well, I'm going to round to the nearest whole number. So it's going to be 820 students. There's my answer. Okay, now looking at compound interest, this is different. With compound interest, you don't use your um, box. And the reason for this is that it's a different type of question that involves um, understanding and learning uh, a formula. So let's look at an example. Uh, the example is that we've got £2,000 saved. We're saving it over three years. And the bank account is offering us 5% interest. So how do we work this out then? Well, let's think about it in terms of understanding the formula before I tell you it. So £2,000 and the bank's offering 5% interest. So if I times that by a multiplier, so 1.05, that's going to give me the interest after one year. Okay. By multiplying by 1, we get the £2,000 we put in. By multiplying by 0 0.5, that represents the 5% interest. Now, so that's year one. Now, this amount at the end of year one now needs to be multiplied by 1.05 again because whatever the amount was at the end of the year, I then get another 5% interest. Okay, so multiplying all this together, so now in between the two brackets, that's going to give me two years. And then, okay, well, I need three years. So I'm going to time that value, so whatever value I get at the end of year two, by 1.05 again, put it into square brackets, and that's going to give me three years. So obviously, this looks a bit messy. Okay, so this formula is quite big and quite messy. So if you look, if I get another colour pen, now if we look at just this section together, Okay, we've got 1.05 times 1.05 times 1.05. Now, you should know, if you times something by itself three times, you can write it to the power of three. Okay, so rather than writing all that out, we could have written 2,000 times 1.5 to the power of three. Well, the question is, what does this tell us about the formula that we can use every time we do these type of questions? Well, that's just it. We can use exactly this formula for all these types of questions. So just pause the video and have a read through this information. Okay, so the, you should see the first amount is always the original amount you put in. You always multiply by whatever the percentage increase is. Remember that the number one would represent the original amount. So if it's going up 7%, this would be 0 0.7. If it was going up by 19%, this would be 1.19. And then the power is always the number of years that you're going to um, have the money in the account for. Or if you're looking at uh, interest over months, it would be to the power of the number of months you're looking at, whatever the question's asking you. Uh, if it ever says depreciate, or that a value is going down over a number of years, then you must remember that this percentage value will be under 1. So if 1 represents the original amount, if that's going to go down, then obviously this value must be lower than 1. So if it's gone down by 8%, the value is 0 0.92. So in terms of a way to remember it, it's the amount times the interest rate to the power of the number, the time. So let's look at two examples. The price of a car depreciates by 12% each year. The car was bought three years ago for £15,500. How much is it worth now? Okay, well, once you know what the formula is for these types of questions, it's one of the quickest exam questions probably on the paper. So it's the amount, it's going down by 12%, so that's going to be, well, 100% take away 12% is going to be 88%. So times by 0 0.88, and that's over three years. So to the power of three. Let's put this into the calculator. Just going to clear that. Okay, so 15,500 times by 0 0.88, that's 
what was it, 0 0.88, 0 0.88, and that was, so this button allows you to put any power in, so it's the power of 3. So if, for example, you had to put the power of 7 in, that would be the button you need to use. Uh, so that was 3, so that equals, okay, so it's gone down to 10,562. Now again, this is money, so if the question doesn't tell you what to round it to, I would always put it to two decimal places because that's pounds and then pence. So find your place, look next door, this is 5 or greater, so you add one more, so that goes to 8, 2. Just minimize that. Okay, so there's your answer, really nice and quick. Let's have a look at one more. So money in a savings account now gains 4% interest per year. We're investing £6,000 and it's going to be over 7 years. So again, really nice and quick. 6000 We've got 4% interest, so we put 0 for there, and it's over 7 years, so it's the power of 7. 6,000 times 1.04, again this button here, it's the power of 7. So that's going to go up to 7,895. Again we're working with money, so let's look at the pence. That's a zero, so perfect, that doesn't need to round up, so it's just going to be to five, nine. And there's your question done. Okay, I hope you found this video useful.